All right, everyone, thanks to Fawn Malnu for uh, tweeting this out, otherwise it probably would have taken longer to see it, but uh, YouTube is now planning to label government-sponsored content on the platform. I guess the idea is, uh, you know, you go to a video and it's by, like, RT or something, or the BBC, you know, is the BBC going to get labeled government-sponsored? Because they're completely paid for by the UK taxpayers. Uh, what's going to happen is you're going to see, like, a little, I guess, label or flag or something. This is, by the way, <laughs> Facebook tried this. They ended up rescinding the program because by labeling it government funded uh, and more people ended up watching because now they get a nice spiffy little flag on there and it makes it more obvious. Wow, this is something this is something that, uh, you know, some other government, <laughs> honestly, or the tech firm itself that loves censorship thought that maybe people should be warned about. So that might that makes it uh, better. It's like limited state. Limited state hasn't suppressed many of the videos that were put in limited state. It also hasn't been used for its original express and explicit purpose. I'll get into that a little bit later because it involves right wing watch and me sparring with Holt like last night. It was actually fucking hilarious. But here's the uh, funny thing. PBS, that's right, public broadcasting, comes out and says, well, we're uncomfortable with this. You know, we're government funded. You're telling us that you're going you're gonna to make people aware that PBS is government funded. No, I'm sure nobody knew that to begin with. To see them whine, to see a bunch of lamestream groups whine is probably the funniest part. I mean, this is explicitly their purpose is to suppress ma Russian propaganda. I guess the idea uh, is that some off-hook Russian channel that people wouldn't suspect immediately is government-funded, that they'll end up getting like labeled like that. Now, this could start easily a lawsuit uh, on multiple fronts, and I've got one major problem with it. What about groups that are not directly funded by a government, but are definitely indirectly funded? For instance, what about CNN? CNN's parent company uh, has holdings all around, gets money from governments, from the function of governments. Various media orders get kickbacks from politicians all the time through middlemen. We know that this goes on, it's, it's just a dark web of money. What exactly is the difference between a, a U.S. firm that tends to get money indirectly from government sources. Hey, you know, we do we do interviews with certain politicians because we're giving them money through some, you know, other company that, you know, our parent company owns. Money gets transferred there. It gets, you know, straw manned basically into their campaign. Then they give us sit down stuff. It's an indirect form of payment that doesn't involve maybe maybe the, the normal legal channels that you would think of. What's the difference between that and, and the result on the propaganda spewed out by these corporations in the West, or in the Eastern sense, what you generally get, which is the government just owns it completely. Of course, in Britain, you have the same thing. In Europe, increasingly, states uh, either suppress independent media or ban it altogether when it's inconvenient. So does this mean that I'm going to get to see a little, you know, little flag saying, yes, the BBC indeed, it's state-sponsored, so be careful because they might not be unbiased. CNN is essentially state-co-opted, which they are. Uh, they take marching orders from the Clinton campaign, MSNBC too. They coordinate openly. Does that mean that they're in part sponsored by, you know, a government entity? I would think that that would be a concern. They should be probably be labeled. What about groups that take money from people that simply rub elbows with the political elite, like maybe one of George Soros's holdings? Are they going to get a label, a little label that says might be compromised due to, you know, money corrupts? And there's the problem. The problem is it will not be applied even handedly. However, there's one good thing about this particular act over maybe limited state, like the restricted stuff and monetization. This probably won't affect any independent users on the platform, even if they are like Russian. Because unless YouTube is convinced that they're getting paid by a foreign state, they're, they're not going to potentially risk a, a lawsuit over labeling that person's information uh, as such. I would think that would be a legal problem. I have, I'll hazard a guess. I'll say I give a 99% chance that this is more amusing and short-lived than it is problematic for the average actual independent YouTube user. Because I'm going to sit back, I'm, I'm going like, to go there and I'm going to get to see like, oh, this is state-sponsored. It's be kind of funny. You know, then people will like, be uh, collecting like screenshots of this stuff, compiling it, 
and it'll be very funny. And what will quickly happen is that lamestream outlets in Europe will probably complain and get the uh, program removed. Or they'll say, well, it doesn't matter if it's the UK government. You know, YouTube's being even-handed. They're saying, well, you know, it's propaganda. Or it's state-sponsored stuff. People have a right to know. It's basically like a labeling law. Like, we're telling people about the GMOs they're putting in their brain. So it's going to be really, really, really funny when a group like the BBC says, well, well, no, 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 wait. I know that we want to label propaganda, but we're not propaganda because it's the UK's government. No, 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 it's it's Russia and China. They make the propaganda. We we do real news. And well, sorry, says YouTube, you're, you're state-sponsored. What the fuck are we supposed to do about it? The rule says if you're state-sponsored, you get a label. And it won't actually, I mean, it's not going to decline their viewership or anything. It should. Like, nobody should be viewing their bullshit anyway, whether it's foreign or not. I don't care whether it's from Russia, uh, uh, UK, or if it's US lamestream media. It's all a bunch of lies. We've known that it's lies forever. It's like when trustworthiness in the media here, the lamestream, the, the missing link slash true legacy media, is below 20%, at what point are they going to realize they've already lost this battle? They're not going to recover from that. What are they supposed to do on cable? Uh, that can't be done 10 times better and more efficiently online. Nothing. They can't even speak freely. They can't use the wrong word or they get fined by the FCC or some other entity. Uh, so they're fighting with, you know, two legs tied behind their back. Good luck to them. You know, I actually get to say, damn it. Uh, people can come out here. You know, you don't have to dress in a tuxedo when you're making a YouTube video. It's so much better in every possible way. It's so much cheaper, so much more efficient. The pool of talent is so much larger. You know, it doesn't involve just people with so-called degrees in, in my journalism. What did journalism class teach you? For a lot of these pundits, it doesn't seem to have taught them anything. They certainly don't have journalistic ethics. They, they, can, they can't do copy editing. <laughs> so what, the, what exactly is their skill? They look pretty for the camera and they can speak coherently. Well, I can do that too. You know, I could uh, come out here in a suit and, and cut my hair short, be a nerd like they are. No thanks. I, I think that I'd rather not. I don't need to. It's uh, it's dumb. So YouTube labeling this stuff is it's probably going to be hilarious because P P PBS, a left wing outlet for the most part, they're not exactly friendly towards any political group that claims that they want to shrink government budgets because they take government money. It's as simple as that. So they tend to be like a Democrat, sort of center left. And some of their programming, by the way, PBS is, is really fun. Like, didn't they, they do uh, Arthur, and I think they still do. And Arthur's a great show. It's about an ADHD kid who hallucinates all the time. You can't get more fun than that. I think they had, weren't they the ones that put on Magic School Bus? Maybe. I'm not 100% sure. And like, you know, Mr. Rogers and shit like that. It's just very, it's kind of dry and, and sometimes cringy, sort of kid's education and, you know, analytical awareness. And it is basically, you know, with some of the political talk, it competes with, you know, people like me, but it's better than CNN. Uh, it's still not fair. It's still propaganda, but it's more listenable. Like, it's not as out there and, and whacked out as an MSNBC. Like, you're not going to get a Rachel Maddow on the PBS NewsHour, okay? Uh, but I'm, I'm going to side with them on this and just sit back, though, and wait and chuckle. Because when PBS is telling you, hey, you're going too far, this is scaring us, it's going to be hilarious. Oh, I can't wait to see. I can't, I'm going to go to PBS's channel itself uh, just to see the fact that they've been labeled government-sponsored or not. And it's going to be funny. I think I'll post about that when that time comes. Maybe it's already active. Uh, I can't remember exactly which day they said. I think, I think they plan to put it in very quickly. It's going to be a quick implementation because it's not going to involve that many groups. It's going to be mainstream state-sponsored orders. That means so BBC and RT and PBS and stuff like that. Well, they are. They're government-sponsored. Uh, it's not a lie. It's not technically misleading anyone. It's just giving a moniker to different groups that has become associated with negativity. I would associate it with negativity too, but the thing is, it doesn't need to be directly government-sponsored. Keep in mind that all of the mainstream cable and, and radio outlets in the West are no different than the state-controlled media of the East. It's just it appears different on the surface because they use a middleman. That's the only difference. They want to maintain the illusion that they're independent. They're not independent. Look how they react when the president scoops them on Twitter. Look at what they do for the next year of fucking time when that happens. There's a reason for that. You know, they're not getting their money's worth. That's a, They didn't donate to him, so he doesn't give them stories, and they're really, really sad about it. That's ultimately what it boils down to. He's the tech era president. That's about all. Peace out.